Welcome to the channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Satnam and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jai Gobind and this is your channel for grace. Thank you guys so much for being here live and thank you to those of you that are watching the replay. We're going to talk about the full moon lunar eclipse that is happening in the sign of Libra very early in the morning on Monday, March 25th. But we're going to look at it through the lens of human design, which if you don't know what human design is, human design can give you and tell you a lot of information about your strategy, your authority, your <clears throat> your aura type, and how to function in the world in the most um, successful way, in the most aligned way. It shows you when you're when you're like in your not self theme and it also shows you when what happens and how you're going to feel if you live aligned with your design. So it's a really beautiful um, <clears throat> system to use and I use that along with, oh wow, the code that I just got was 7333 for the iPad. Um, I use it, I use that, I use astrology and I use gene keys all together and they're, they're amazing when you work with them together. So <clears throat> that's what we're going to do today. We're going to explore the lens of human design about this um, Libra eclipse. And um, I also want to, before we dive into that, make sure you have your chart, your human design chart, so you can kind of compare if this is going to be affect where this is going to be affecting you in your personal chart. But before we dive into that, I do want to say thank you to everyone that's here. Hello, Jeanette. Hello, Bernadine. If you haven't said hi in the chat, please do. I love interacting with people in the chat <clears throat> when I go live. It's part of the fun <laughs> for me and for everybody, I think. Um, and also, if you're new, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you get notified of when I go live <clears throat> and when I upload videos. Download my free moon astrology guide, which will tell you what your psychic gifts are based off of your moon sign. It also enters you into my email list and I send out a weekly Moon Magic Report, where I go over the horoscope of the week, along with the um, events that are coming up for the week. And we have so much going on. We have a, our own private community, which I want to invite you to join. It's called the Global Community. Hello, Cassandra. And hello, Lish. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> Jai for breakfast, lunch, and <laughs> 
Oh, that's hilarious. But um, our global community is a free space for you to join. I host free events in the global community. I also host all of my courses. And there's two really exciting things that are currently um, going on that are that I want to share with you as well. <clears throat> the first one is my Seasons and Stargates, your annual astrology guide, 2024-2025 is now out. This book is freaking amazing. It has the entire year of astrology, the whole calendar for the year for all the major transits, all the new and the full moons, <clears throat> the information about each of them, the gene key, the gate, the chakra, the system of the body. All of this is um, uh, created with or based off of the ancient Atlantean wisdom of walking the path of the Merkaba and doing it through the uh, zodiac wheel, <clears throat> through the seasons of astrology. And also the ebook, the workbook ebook is now available as well. So the, the workbook is meant to be the companion to the seasons and stargates guide and give you rituals and practices to help stay in alignment during each of the seasons. So we're in airy season right now, in case you didn't know. And that means a lot of things. One of the things that it means is that <clears throat> this is eclipse season. So we're going to be seeing two eclipses, one Monday and then one April 8th. So March 25th and April 8th in Libra and Aries. That's the theme. That's where, that, that's where the nodes are right now. And these are really powerful eclipses, especially if you live in the United States for that April 8th eclipse that will be crossing over a lot of the United States. And the other announcement I want to share with you is, so yesterday we started <clears throat> our Starseed Astrology School. It was so much fun. We dove into the mythology of Andromeda, the Starseed markings of Andromeda, what they mean, <clears throat> what they represent in a chart and how to interpret them in a chart. We also looked into Hathor and Venusian starseed markings. We looked at the mythology, the Egyptian story of Hathor, Isis, Osiris, Nephthys, and Set, Hathor and Horus. And we looked a little bit into the Temple of Dendera and um, <clears throat> the Zodiac Wheel that's you know on the, the ceiling that was found on the ceiling of the Temple of Dendera, which is basically this like magical temple of everything astrology. And then we also looked at Algol, which is, is known as the demon star, but um, it's a powerful point in the chart of transformation and transmutation from darkness to light. The Algol begins the darkness to light portal. And we had a freaking blast going over all of that and looking at each other's charts. This class is a six week class and everything will be recorded so you can watch all of the replays afterwards and whenever you want to go over the information again. So some of the other starseed markings that we're going to talk about, basically you're learning how to do starseed readings, is the darkness to light portal, which we're going to cover next week, uh, the Pleiades, Alcyon, Aldebaran, and Orion, Week three is Sirius, Regulus, and Ursa Major. <clears throat> Week four is Arcturus, Centaurus, and Antares. Week five is Ophiuchus, the Galactic Center, and Lyra. And week six, week six is Aquila, Fomalhaut, and Pegasus. And then putting it all together and like interpreting a whole chart. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. So if you sign up for the Starseed Astrology School, you get the Seasons and Stargates Embodiment Workbook. It's an ebook for free. And this ebook has the Stargates calendar for the entire year. So you can like use the information that you learn in the school and apply it to the transits that will be going on. For example, we're going to have a really powerful transit coming this week. One of the first ones, which is Mars on Fomalhaut. And Fomalhaut is the Christ Consciousness star. It's the star that connects to Archangel Gabriel, who is the messenger of God. It's also one of the royal fixed stars. And it aligns with when you see the bull, the lion, <clears throat> the 
eagle and the man it connects with the man and there's so much symbolism with uh the royal fixed stars and we will be covering all the royal fixed stars in the uh star seed astrology school so come join us we just got started we're gonna have so much freaking fun in this class we already are and um in talking about the seasons and stargates book we are literally going through the workbook in the starseed membership and using the book together in the starseed membership so make sure that you join us because this is going to be the best way to to basically go supported through all of these seasons and we just had a workshop today which was all about the eclipses we looked at our charts i gave uh, like a reading for every person in their chart as to what the eclipses how the eclipses are going to be affecting them and you get a lot of personal attention in the starseed membership so if you're wanting to learn your own chart better if you're wanting to learn like the astrology better if you want to know what's going on i i do so much in the starseed membership i have um basically uh videos that i upload for every time a planet ingresses into a sign um i have um in the beginning of the month i do the astrology and theme of the month video then i do the akashic reading for the month connecting with the starseed families that are active with the sun during that month so there's just so freaking much you guys you can kind of see the content if you go to my website and click on the page of what i upload i do full moon new moon journals and meditations um, and then you get a daily like daily notifications when really powerful transits are happening and the the notifications come out in the morning and you you can you can see what the energy is going to be like for the day and you you have all of that um <clears throat> information so you flow more easily all right thank you for letting me share all that so many exciting things going on um i really do love being able to uh share with you all all of the creations <laughs> all of my creations um so thank you to those of you that just joined the membership so excited to see you guys and we'd love to see more of you with us and all the workshops that we do the special workshops you get them included in the membership so let's look at this chart this chart is a little bit crazy what do you notice about it um okay there's like really no channels for this full moon lunar eclipse and so i guess the energy may feel unless you have a, a gate that connects to one of these gates that are present here it may be it may feel a little bit ethereal is is like my first sort of intuitive hit when i look at this chart but we have to go in and see what are what are these gates that are being activated so what we talked about in the astrology video of the full moon in Libra was about the fact that this full moon um, lunar eclipse in Libra is happening on the 18th gene key and the 18th gate. And according to the gene keys, the, the, the frequency moves from the shadow of judgment to the gift of integrity to the city of perfection. So we are being asked to transmute the shadow of judgment to the gift of uh, integrity and really to just to, to be in our truth is is a big part of it now libra also the energy of libra itself is ruled by planet venus who is the goddess of love and beauty and she represents what we truly desire what we truly want and so we want balance and harmony <laughs> you know however because the south node is here with this eclipse it's karmic healing and so there's no way around transmuting this shadow of judgment into the gift of integrity and the only way to really transmute anything any shadow is to go right to it to go and face it straight on head on and this south node theme is let go of any relationships connections anything that doesn't serve you that that where you lose yourself you lose who you are you forget who you are and so all of this stuff together when you look at it in your chart it brings up like this huge theme of transformation collectively and individually in the realm of relationships for everyone 
Now, the lesson for this eclipse is to let go and release. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. The next eclipse that happens in two weeks on April 8th in Aries, it is a total solar eclipse. And that eclipse is asking us to like take action to move forward. Right, right now, you got to focus on what you're letting go of. That's how you are going to flow through these energies in the best way. So let's take a look at where this eclipse is happening. So the moon is going to be on the 18th gate. The sun is going to be on the 17th gate. So for these, for this eclipse, we have moon in the spleen, sun in the ajna. The spleen center is the center of intuition, like awareness, instinct, knowing what's safe, what's not safe, what's secure, what's not secure. It's instinctual. You don't really have to think about it too much. You just get a feeling and you got to trust it. It doesn't repeat itself. These intuitive messages do not repeat themselves. And the Ajna, where the sun is at, because remember a full moon, these, these are opposing, right? Um, hello, Elizabeth, welcome in. The Ajna is the center of like processing the um, thoughts, thinking, um, contemplating, trying to figure things out through the mental realm. So we have spleen, instinctual, intuitive awareness, and mind, the ability to process everything. But what does <clears throat> this 18th gate mean? The 18th gate in human design is called the gate of correction to work on what has been spoilt. <laughs> the quick reference theme is people with a gift for always seeing the faults in everything in order to make improvements. My husband has this channel, the 1858. It's his only defined channel. So I see this so clearly in him. He's always like, this could be better. And, and I've had to learn <laughs> in my personal life because I'm like super sensitive that like I'd, I've, I've had to learn that his intention is not to like hurt my feelings when he says like, oh, this could be better, you know? And um, <clears throat> it's been quite the journey. And, and what I love about human design is that it helps you to surrender to like, hey, this is an energy that has to exist in the world because if it doesn't exist, then we're not going to do any better. You know, we're not going to be able to see what's wrong in order to fix it or in order to improve it. Right. These people always see what is wrong with things. They naturally know when any pattern is flawed and feel happiest when challenging it. Oh, Kim has it too. Hello. Welcome in. These are gifted critics. <laughs> However, without the 58, and if you don't, does anyone here have the 58 besides um, Kim? Or the channel, the, the channel of judgment, 1858, let us know in the chat. For the rest of us, if you don't have the 58, like I don't have the 58. And so for me, it's going to be this energy by itself. So without um, the 58, the tendency is to only see the faults in things without having the drive to do anything about them. And that is the thing that makes this tricky this full moon we may be like this sucks and that sucks and that's not working but like we don't really know what to do about it we don't really like have the drive to fix it you know so that's that's something to be on the lookout for it is through this gate that we receive our deepest conditioning from our parents okay so that's huge <laughs> like we are working on healing trauma here. This is an eclipse. It's revolution. It's big change. Um, hey, Don. So, so we're dealing with like conditioning from our parents. That's wild. So maybe some of us are dealing with what the theme here is in, involves our relationship with our parents, regardless of whether we have it defined or not. Ooh, the greatest conditioning will happen always will always come from the parent of the opposite sex. Okay, that's even more crazy. Elizabeth has the 58. People with definition in this gate or channel have to confront 
their parental conditioning over the course of their lives. Whoa! That's crazy. Let me read that again. People with definition in this Gator channel have to confront their parental conditioning over the course of their lives. They need to learn that the very conditioning they received as children is actually the source of their gift of criticism. Whoa. Okay. I love how this is like spinning it in this, like this really positive and powerful direction. This gate represents the fear of authority and the challenge to that authority. Oh, damn. Okay. So this is kind of a big deal. <laughs> this is a crazy eclipse, you guys. If we're all going to have the lens, like pr pretend you're like putting on the, the eclipse glasses and we're going to have, we're all going to see the world like through this lens, right? What's wrong and what's not working, right? The shadow of judgment. However, if we can tune into how can this become better? How can this improve instead of it's just wrong and it's not working? Like if we can transmute that shadow of judgment into the gift of the integrity of it, then we lift ourselves up. Like all of the judgment in the world, all of the criticism in the world is meant, like basically plays the role of like uplifting and evolving and like making the world a better place. Improvement. So the potential here is really beautiful, but the detriment, you know, mm, can be kind of gnarly, especially for those of us that don't have the 58. Don't get stuck in this is wrong, something's wrong. I've actually, you know, I'm guilty of this in these last like few weeks. Holy shit, I've been going through it. That Pisces season just like ran over me like a bus. And it was not fun. I'm like, I, I, I'm not going to lie about it. I hated this Pisces season. I like was literally like tormented, <laughs> emotionally tormented, mentally tormented. My whole like mental projector thing was, was way off balance. Like there are some times where I don't like being a mental projector. <laughs> and it's because my mind doesn't stop. And so when I'm unbalanced, my mind is like, like crashing, you know, into the ground. So this can be a space of like real powerful improvement and upliftment. And it can also be a place of just straight up not going to feel good. We all have the ability to make decisions in our lives. Some people believe there's free will and some people believe there's not. But haven't you in your life sometimes made like a decision and then instantly been like, oh, I knew I should have done that or I knew I should have done this instead. That's the spleen energy. So listen to the first message that comes through. That's the key to like moving to this energy is to trust your spleen, whether you have it defined or not, to trust that instinctual knowing it's not going to repeat itself. You know right away. I was swirling. And it's not in a fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> exactly, Lish. Same, same. I'm like, I was, I wanted to be excited about the new year, but I was so exhausted about Pisces season that I was like dead. <laughs> and I'm like, I got to catch up. I got to catch up. And also I was like, I would never caught up. Like all Pisces season, like everything was like jamming it, you know, got to get it done, got to get it done. And it was like this like unending list of things that needed to get done in order for like these huge projects to be completed. Like you got to finish writing the book, dude, you know, and things like that. Like it was not hardly for me. It was hardly. it's not going to be like that next year, right? Because the book is pretty much like set up and structured. And I, w I do want to write the book every year. And uh, I do want to make the workbook um, not an ebook, but an actual book, but I got to give myself some space right now. Um, because it's been quite the journey with the whole book writing. And, um, yeah, so <laughs> give me a moment on that. But, uh, I mean, we have a whole year, right? So the book is good for a whole year. Um, so for, so for now we, we get that ebook and then, um, probably in like maybe a month or so, I'll have it ready as like a, a physical copy if it feels right, if it feels in alignment to do that. 
But um, anyways, that was like total side note talking about um, Pisces season. But now we're here and we're in a whole, it's a whole new astrological year. So we're beginning this eclipse season with this shadow of judgment. <laughs> like, <laughs> and the opportunity to step into the, um, the gift of integrity. Uh, Elizabeth says, yes, I agree. Having a splenic, uh, your splenic projector. That's my husband too. And, uh, Ariel too. Um, okay. So now that we've got this energy covered, let's go look at the 17, um, 17th gate in the Ajna. But first of all, the 18th gate is the understanding circuit, which makes sense. It is all, and so is the 17th, actually. So this is a very logical energy. We're like moving through this energy in a very uh, logical way. Using the mind is what I mean. So the 17th, does anyone have the 62? I'm pretty sure I don't. The gate of opinion. <laughs> okay, so um, let me actually look at this real quick. So if this if the 18th is the shadow of judgment and the 17th is a shadow of opinion, damn, if we're in the shadow of this energy, holy shit, that's going to be gnarly. You definitely want to work on transmuting this shadow, step into integrity and step into far sightedness, meaning seeing things from a further perspective, because, yeah, that can get ugly. <laughs> okay, the 1762 is one of your channels. Okay, so the gate of opinion following. Quick reference theme. People who form opinions by projecting their minds into the future in order to be of service. And I like this design of it. Having logical minds, these people need to organize the solution to their doubts into a workable concept ready to be expressed to others. They have to shape a new opinion out of a mental pattern so that it can withstand both testing and criticism. This is the gate of the right eye. Ooh. And pattern recognition. The 17 takes the answer to the doubt from the 63 and which I will say, you see the 63 is active, right? Guess who's on the 63? Venus and Saturn. Venus is the ruler of this eclipse. So the 17 takes the answer to the doubt from the 63, which the doubt is the shadow, and forms an opinion from it. However, dude, this is crazy synchronistic. However, opinions at this stage of the conceptual process are merely theoretical and require the presence of the 62 to provide the detail and hard fact in order to back them up. These kinds of people have an eye for seeing and understanding structures and frameworks, but no instant ability to share what they have understood. <laughs> That's hilarious. The way that I see something is often very difficult to translate without an image. These are visually oriented people. Oh, I see that in you, Lish. This is, and especially with Mercury, this is also the gate of time distortion. What? These people have an unusual sense of timing. Whoa. That just took me to another dimension. That's crazy. So, basically, the two channels that we're dealing with here they're not complete, but if you have if you have the 62 or the 58, right? You will have the channels completed. And so you'll be able to the 1858 to see what's wrong, but then to have the energy to go fix it. And with the 1762, the channel of acceptance, you have the rare mental ability of seeing the bigger picture without getting bogged down in the details. However, if you do not take the time to look into all the relevant facts and details, your long-term visions will inevitably falter. Wow. You need to have all the facts before you speak. So 
we're looking for the information because we're we're seeing what's not working. Hello, Marie, welcome in. We're seeing what's not working with the 18th. Like, okay, something's not working in my in my life, in my relationships. Remember, this is Libra, Venus, Eclipse. Something's not working. We need to fix it. And the way we're going to fix it is not by just like having an opinion about it, but actually seeing the bigger picture. Can we become the eagle and see from the bird's eye view what is going on in our lives, in our relationships? And with this knowledge, step into integrity within ourselves as well as omniscience, being able to do something instead of just sit there and be like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the archetypes of these two energies are the discoverer and the perceiver. So we're like taking information in and then we're processing it and trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. So I feel like this is beautiful. I feel like these two energies are working really well together. Um, and I feel like this is exciting. What I also wanted to look at is where are the nodes? Because obviously this is an eclipse. And so where the nodes are, they have a, um, a lot of influence in that space. So Seven sun at the 17th, earth 18th, moon 18th. Hey, this eclipse is, oh, hey, Michonne, <laughs> I called you Marie. Um, but your name is Marie Michonne, but I like Michonne. <laughs> I know you as Michonne. But anyways, okay, so 18.2, that's, that's important. So for those of you that like are human design geeks, <laughs> what does the second line mean? Well, first of all, the second line is the hermit. The second line energy in the Gene Keys is known as the dancer. Ooh, okay. So I love this. So this is adding this, the dance, the dance of like seeing what's wrong, but then allowing yourself to flow through it and trust that like the answers will come from within, that you have everything you need within you to like resolve the issues. Because someone who has line twos, I'm a two four. So someone who has line twos are going to have these like natural gifts and talents and they will be very good at a lot of things. Like two lines are like just, it's not, it's ease, it's ease and flow. So we have to learn to flow with ease through all the crazy shit that shows up with the eclipse, which is kind of crazy, right? <laughs> so um, I actually think this is really fun to line two, the dancer, the hermit, trust your inner knowing is what I'm getting. So look right below that north node on the 51. Does anyone know what is going to be happening on the 51st gate in two weeks? <laughs> yes. Okay. The, the new moon total solar eclipse that is crossing through America or the United States, well, America, North and Central, is going to be on the 51st gate. So the North Node is already there. This has been there for a minute, but it's already there right now. It's like poking at us or calling us. Like North Node is like, you're coming here next, boy <laughs> or girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? <gasps> this is too funny. Hello, Malaya. Welcome in. Love what you said. Yeah, going from. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is the 51st? Let's read about the 51st. <laughs> The 51st is actually, okay, let's look at the chart. So we got 51 for the North Node and 57 for the South Node. And they are in line one, which is the investigator. Line one in the Gene Keys is the creator. Ooh, okay. So 51 and 57. Okay, 51 
is in the ego. <laughs> it's in the ego center or the heart center. Uh, it's called the gate of shock. <laughs> I remember writing about the the solar eclipse in Aries in the book and uh, talking about how basically at this point, the universe has no choice but to just shock us into initiation <laughs> and shock us into awakening. And I kind of feel like that's definitely happening. <laughs> Um, this is the arousing people who need to test themselves in order to either be best or first at something total initiation this is the gate of individual individual initiative this is where the the Aries eclipse is happening and we'll talk about that when it gets here it's the only gate out of the heart or the ego center that is not part of the tribal circuitry these are people with very competitive energy so Aries which can manifest as either foolhardiness or courage. They love to shock people with their love of going where no one else dares. Do you feel that call? God, it's like I'm getting chills all over my body. They are always looking for the 25, a sense of spirit or the feeling of going beyond themselves. Dude, this eclipse, oh, this Aries eclipse is gonna be the shit. These people bring a sense of unpredictability and excitement to life and they have a particular gift of empowering others by shocking them out of their own little worlds and into the bigger picture. Yeah, this gate is badass. So the North Node is calling us. And then guess what? The 57 is in the spleen. So the South Node, of course, it's going to be very close to the moon because this is an eclipse. And whenever you have a South Node eclipse, though, it is karma so this is interesting. Karmic lessons from the spleen. Sounds like the title of a book. <laughs> um, hmm, the 57th gate. OMG. The gate of intuitive clarity. The gentle. Wow. The message is like line two for the, for the eclipse gentleness for the south node i mean you can't have a better combination people whose intuitive awareness always ensures their survival this gate is the gate of the right ear oh my god now we have the right eye and the right ear <laughs> and of hearing in the now this gate is the source of all mammalian awareness representing our deepest intuitions which are here to guide us towards survival and well-being. If you have the 57 as part of a definition, we're all feeling this right now with the South Node and with this eclipse, you have very acute attunement to both vibration and sound. Oh my God, sound healing, you guys. Sound healing is the way on Monday. <gasps> what do you guys think about... Mm, we should do sound healing, some kind of sound healing on, uh, on the on the on the eclipse celebration. But I gotta think about it because well, I'm definitely gonna play music. I'll see what I can do about more than just playing music. But yeah, I think sound healing is gonna be perfect. Um, this gate is literally where we hear from our immune system. You guys, the eclipse in the energy of Libra is the immune system. Oh my God. It is also the gate of fear of the unknown, the future. Ooh, but the sun on the 17th helps us see the vision of the future. It needs the raw responsive power of the 34 to ensure it is safe since awareness on its own can do nothing. Without the presence of the 34, the body is powerless to react. When connected to the 20, the awareness can always be expressed but not necessarily acted upon. As individuals, these people are designed not to be influenced by others. Thus, they have selective hearing. If they remain focused intently in the moment, they can always eliminate their underlying fear of the future and the unknown. <gasps> okay, we need to stay present. Where's that Nako song, Be Here Now? Be Here Now. <laughs> You, you can see what's not working, 
but you can also see the bigger picture. And you can be in your integrity. If something's not working, what can you do about it? Not what can some, what does somebody else have to do about it? It's your problem. No, it's like our problem. (laughs) Or maybe it's, hello, Rebecca. Maybe it's nobody's problem. (laughs) But we need to heal through gentleness by listening to our intuition and being in the moment in the now. That is the only way we are going to heal all the karmic wounds right now. It's like the South Node is like, dude, I'm getting a picture of a mother like holding a baby. Rebecca just came in too. You know, like just being cradled, feeling safe, spleen safe. Wow. This is really cool. I didn't even look at any of this. Literally, I I opened it up like I pulled the chart like five minutes before the broadcast and I was like, oh yeah, I know it's the 18th gate, but let's take a look at all the other planets. And now that we're going through all the other planets, I'm like, whoa, Patrice, focus in a new direction. I love that. One more thing that is significant. Guess who's on the 55 now? (laughs) Did you know I'm about to film the video and post it into the Starseed membership? But did you today or tomorrow? I don't know. It's getting kind of late. Did you know I've been going all day? This is a marathon weekend for Jaika Bend. I taught the Starseed Astrology School yesterday. I did a bunch of work, filming videos for the Moon Goddess training. Today we had our eclipse workshop. I did a whole bunch of other work. Now I'm going live and tomorrow I have moon goddess training from 12 to 5 and then we have the eclipse celebration. So I'm so happy I have energy right now. So Mars just entered into the 55 or he just entered into Pisces. He's going to be on the 55 during the eclipse. What's the 55? The gate of the spirit, abundance, people who are deeply melancholic, musical and or romantic and must honor their moods at all costs. Okay, so we may be a little moody. That's okay. (laughs) This gate measures emotional highs and lows and people who have it defined are always looking for that perfect emotional state whether it be peace, love, or ecstasy. 55s are literally waiting to be provoked by 39s in order to know what they are feeling. If their emotional wave is up, they feel at home with themselves. If it is down, they feel melancholic. Their cup is always neither half full or half empty. These people need to let go of trying to rationalize and control their mood. So guess what? We may be moody. Above all, they must learn not to make up reasons for their emotional chemistry. If they wait out the emotional wave, whether their own or someone else's, they will always have a clearer perception of any situation. Okay. This is little, like slightly contradicting because the spleen is all about awareness in the now, but it's asking us to be gentle with ourselves in the now. This is asking us that, here's the, here's the message. If you feel an emotional high or an emotional low during this eclipse, just let it happen. Don't try to like explain it, blah, blah, blah. Just feel whatever the fuck you're feeling and let it flow through. Be So be gentle with yourself, says the South Node. The gentle. I love it. I love all of this. <laughs> And I'm really excited. I really want to look at the Aries eclipse through the human design, but we'll wait (laughs) for that. But we already know the North Node is already there. We're being initiated. We're being awakened. Aries is all about like finding yourself. Know thyself. Know who you are. Know your purpose. Know your mission. Be brave and be courageous as you go forth on the path. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I love it when I'm in this mood. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a good one. I like it. So yeah, we're letting go of old relationships, releasing what does not serve us, making space for new things, 
We're, we're, we're stopping the karmic cycle of losing ourselves to someone else. Losing ourselves to relate to a relationship, having to define ourselves by the relationship. We don't need to do that anymore. We need to define ourselves. And when we know ourselves, we will attract people into our lives that also know themselves. And then we'll have a way better relationship. So, but we we need to be gentle. We need to pay attention. We need to see what's not working. And we also need to step into integrity. I love that. Oh my God. This is going to be hopefully fun to flow through. Um, definitely a lot. Eclipse season is revolutionary, both individually and collectively, but both of these eclipses are auspicious. So these are the kind of eclipses you like want to ride, you know, <laughs> the wild ride. Um, they're not the ones you want to like protect yourself from. They're the ones that you want to go, go, let's go. That's what Aries says. So thank you guys for being here. Um, thank you for supporting this channel and this community. I hope to see you guys in the global community. Maybe you can join us in the Starseed Astrology School and 100% get your copy of Seasons and Stargates, the um, paperback copy and the e-workbook, which is now available. All the links to everything are in the description. Satnam, I'll see you tomorrow for our full moon lunar eclipse ceremony. And I'm seriously thinking of doing a sound healing. I might do like a whole separate thing of sound healing possibly on Monday. I don't know. I'll think about it. Or maybe I'll combine the ceremony to have sound healing in some way. It's just this mic is not the best. The setup here is not the best for that. Um, however, we'll figure it out. I love you guys. Have a good night and I'll see you tomorrow. Satnam.